Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. A significant part of Detroit's black history is in line to possibly receive a Michigan historical marker. The city's former Black Bottom neighborhood was a booming place for African Americans in the early to mid 20th century. Located on the city's Near East Side, its main commercial strips were along Hastings and St. Antoine Streets. The area was demolished for redevelopment in the early 1960s. The Michigan History Center has partnered with Detroit's Black Historic Sites Committee to hold a public discussion on the location and content for the marker. Joining me now are David Head, who is the chair of the Black Historic Sites Committee, historian Jamon Jordan, Toby Voigt from the Michigan History Center, and Sharna Sanders of the Detroit Historical Society. Welcome all of you to American Black Journal. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So the idea of a marker to commemorate Black Bottom, it, it, the thing that comes to my mind uh, uh, when I think about this is, what is there now that would show anybody where Black Bottom was? Well, uh, I don't, there, there's some, uh, a lot of places need to be uh, addressed in that area, so much history there, and Jamal would bring that out. Mm -hmm. But let me first say, uh, we all stand on the shoulders of, of giants, and I must uh, share with the audience our, about our founder, uh, Ernest C. Brown. Mm -hmm in 1971 started the Black Historic Sites Committee and I'm honored to be keeping it alive with our programming and our pop-up exhibits and our bus tours. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so, yeah. Yeah, so, so talk about the idea of this marker. What will it uh, commemorate? Where should it go? This is the thing that we're gonna discuss at this town I'm gonna hand the ball to <laughs> Brother Jamal. He's <laughs> okay, the expert ahead, and he's also a member of the Black Historic Sites yes, Committee. Yes, of course he is. And yeah. <laughs> so, so we're discussing places and content of where the marker should be and what should be on the marker. So that hasn't been decided yet. Yeah. But the idea that Black Bottom receives a Michigan historic marker is monumental. Yeah. Um, Black Bottom is, of course, one of the most significant places in Michigan's history, of course, Detroit's history, but Michigan's history. It's a culturally rich area, not just for African Americans, but for many people who migrated from Europe, the indigenous Native Americans who were already there before the French arrived, all of that rich history is a part of Black Bottom's history. So the fact that we're going to have a marker in somewhere in what that community was is right. highly important. Yeah. Uh, there are people who uh, either don't know what mm -hmm. Black Bottom was or have misconceptions mm -hmm. about what it was. Let's uh, give a sort of thumbnail history of the area. So, of course, Black Bottom, which wasn't originally named that for African Americans. Right. Of course, it was originally named that because <laughs> of the rich the soil. Right? soil. Yeah. The French named it Fond Noir which of mm -hmm. course is Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. And so they have farms that ran from the river through that area known as Ribbon Farms. And so we got some of those Ribbon Farm names. Um, Jean Rivard is Rivard Street. Mm -hmm. Alexander Shane's farm is now Shane. And so we got a lot of that history there. But of course, it's going to be an area where immigrants from Europe, Germans, Polish people, Irish, um, Greeks, of course, Greek town is right there uh -huh. next to Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. so, these immigrants will be coming into that area from the 1800s until the early 1900s. And of course, African Americans are there. African Americans have been there, of course, during the period of slavery and the Underground Railroad, mm -hmm. but they're also there and concentrated in that neighborhood during the Great Migration period when mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of African Americans are leaving the South and coming to the North. Detroit's concentrated area for African American residents is Black Bottom. Yeah, and uh, if you think of prominent African Americans in this community over many decades, a lot of them have their roots mm -hmm. in that right. Black Bottom neighborhood. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, talk about the Michigan History Center's role here. Sure. Well, the Michigan History Center, we work with the Michigan Historical Commission, which is the uh, legislatively authorized uh, body that actually runs the historical marker program. So we uh, received, and the marker program is always community driven. So when uh, individuals in a community, churches, uh, municipalities get together and determine that they want to have a marker, so they submit a very rigorous application uh, package to the Historical Commission who reviews it and, and determines, well, the Historical Commission received from a community member an application for Black Bottom, and we instantly flagged it as this is you know, obviously very significant and important in history. Yeah. Um, but working with the commission and the History Center, um, we determined that a, a story this big, and as, as Jamon said, with so many centuries of history, with layer upon layer of stories, that the only way to really consider doing a marker right would be to get into the community and hear from everybody in the Detroit area who has a stake, has a story in mm -hmm. a black bottom. Yeah. Uh, so. 
you have these markers all over the state. Talk about how you decide sure. who gets a marker and who doesn't. Sure. Well, uh, it's we've got about seven. 1,800 markers, actually worldwide. We have one in France huh. for Cadillac's birthplace. Is that right? And wow. some in Kentucky and Tennessee <laughs> marking uh, Civil War battlefields. Okay. Huh. But most are within the state of Michigan. And uh, the program started in 1955 um, with the Historical Commission, with an act of the legislature. So it's a, a state law. And as I said, it's always been, it was always envisioned as community driven. So um, individuals determine what they want to submit. And the commission is the one who reviews it. Uh, requires the application process requires quite a bit of research just like any historian so lots of primary sources secondary sources um, the applicant needs to make the case on why this is a significant story in Michigan's history yeah uh, and then the Commission determines that so I will say that it's a really exciting time for the marker program because our current historical Commission is really taking some time now I don't know, 60 some years in, to take a look back at, you know, developing processes to look at the 1700 markers that we have. You know, some of them were from 1955 mm. and perhaps our interpretation of history has changed or the language <laughs> that we we've choose learned to a little use, since then, right? right? <laughs> so they're kind of, I guess, audit's too strong of a term, but they're going and looking at um, all of the markers in Michigan to determine a couple of things. You know, are they still correct and appropriate? Uh -huh. And I think most importantly, what what are the gaps in the stories that haven't been told? Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the early markers were, um, you know, there's a lot of the first white person or the yeah. first settler, right. you know. So um, so taking some time now to, to find those gaps and then really engaging with community. Uh, and that's an important part. You know, I, I work for the, the state of Michigan, the Michigan History Center, the commission is a government appointed body, but we administer the program with them. So it's really exciting for us to come in. And I will say that um, before my time, and Jamon <laughs> knows this, that there are uh, already several significant African-American history, green and gold historical markers yeah. Yeah. in the city of Detroit. And the fact that um, Black Bottom hasn't yeah. been told before yeah. is a surprise. Yeah. I mean, Paradise Valley got a marker uh, only in say. 2000. Three. Okay. So, um, so we've I've got we've got some one. work to do. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, the historical society, of course, uh, is is deeply involved in commemorating Black history as well as uh, other history. Talk about your role here. Definitely. Well, it was a pleasure when Toby did reach out to the Black Historic Sites Committee and Detroit Historical Society to get involved mm -hmm. with our mission of telling Detroit stories and why they matter. It's important that we do have programs like these that really allow the community to voice their opinions and input, especially when it comes to our history, because it's always something that needs to be told and acknowledged. Yeah. And as our city continues to change and evolve, it's our responsibility, especially the Black Historic Sites Committee, to really just help remind people and to help preserve this history mm -hmm. and I think it's a remarkable opportunity to have people come out this upcoming Monday for this program and to really just voice their opinions so we can acknowledge this significant part of our history. Yeah. Uh, the marker is going to be really important but you guys are involved in keeping this history alive right. for people all the time, the bus tours. That's right. uh, it's 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 important to do that, but I also feel like uh, you're still kind of pushing back mm -hmm. against people and institutions who want to say this is just not that important anymore. That's right. It's, yeah, go ahead. Well, what, one thing we do have some issues right now with a lot of markers are not mi are missing. People are taking them, right? And for one reason or another, they need to be replaced. Yeah. So that's one of our goals moving forward in the 2019 calendar to get a marker mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And Jamon knows the story of these markers even better yeah. because he's thinking about writing a book yeah, on uh, the markers right, in yeah. Detroit. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, um, and, and in, on one level, there's the, of course a present day issue about where Detroit is going, mm -hmm. but this is a historic issue, and particularly with Black Bottom, because Black Bottom is one of those stories of a group of people and a whole community being removed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that has to be a part of the story, even in the marker itself. It has to be a part of this story because. Um, Black Bottom is, of course, a case of what people call urban renewal, many African Americans call Negro removal. Negro removal. <laughs> yeah, and when the federal government passed the National Housing Act in 1949 and the city decides to tear down yeah. this historic community. Yeah. And that legacy is a part of Detroit's um, 
present day situation right now. Uh -huh. You can't talk about present day Detroit without talking about what happened to Black Lives. Right. Uh, are, are there places that you go on the tours uh, that you feel like are, are stronger reminders of, of that than, than others? Yes. Yeah, so even in the Black Bottom area is the home site of Fannie Richards. Right. Fannie Richards, of course, is the first African-American public school teacher mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit. She arrives here during the period when slavery and the Underground Railroad is an issue. And so she's here and she's going to pioneer or be one of the leaders of overturning racial segregation in the 1800s mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit's public schools. Yeah. And so that's a part of that history. So it's, it's residential, it's business, but it's also civil rights, yeah. Underground Railroad, activism, the building of institutions for African-Americans. All of that can be traced in, in part to Black Bottom. Yeah. Okay, well, it's really exciting to, to think that we'll have a marker soon mm -hmm. uh, to commemorate all that and uh, people can come out and give their input about what should be so, on it. I wanted to say that uh, I think what also should be put in that in, in a certain place is like a mural because sometimes you, got, you can't say everything in one word, but mm -hmm. what a picture says a thousand words. But people's uh, images, uh, That's visitors right. up. Yeah. Uh, and if they can and capture that through that. a mural, yeah. to capture all that, that would be beautiful. That would be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to, right. to, I know we got it, but yeah. the um, community input session is at the Detroit Historical Museum on Monday the 10th yeah. from 6 to 8 p.m. So general public's invited, yeah. we'll be gathering ideas for the marker and perhaps even for yeah. some murals and some art projects And that'll well. all be on our website, all that info. Wonderful. So. All right. Thank